Good evening, Abundant Life Tabernacle. Welcome to our midweek Bible study. Um, we don't plan on being long tonight. There will be no worship service. If we could just jump straight into our prayer. Um, same needs as before, Sister Valerie, along with our church family, and to keep the Lee family in your prayers, please, as they go through this difficult time. If you have an unspoken request, if you could signify that by a raising of a hand, we may not be able to see you, but God can see you. So, dear God, I, we lift your name high, Jesus, higher than every other name. There is nobody that compares to you. You hold all power in heaven and in earth. So, dear God, you know the needs of every single person that raised their hand, God. Whatever situation they are going through at this time and period in their life, whatever valley they are traveling through, dear God, you promised that you would never leave us lonely. And that you would walk by us, Jesus. You didn't promise that we wasn't going to go through trials and tribulations. But you promised if we keep steadying on, that you will see us through to the other side. So God, as we speak it in faith right now, God, I believe that every prayer that is in need of, God, is being answered right now. Dear God, we lift Sister Valerie up to you right now. God, continue to heal her and her body. Continue to do a miracle work in her body, God. Dear God, touch the doctors and physicians' hands that are upon her, Jesus. We know that you are the great physician. The doctors and the physicians don't have the final say, but you do, God. And dear God, we ask that you would touch our church family, God. We ask that you would heal anybody that is sick and in pain. We ask that you would touch anybody that is in fear. We ask that you would touch anybody that is in danger, God. Dear God, continue to help them be faithful to your word like never before. And dear God, we lift the Lee family up to you right now, God, as they go through this difficult time. We know that you are comforting, comforting them right now, Jesus. Dear God, continue to wrap your hands upon them and keep your hands upon them, Jesus. We worship you and we magnify your name. And dear God, we pray for the lost souls of this city as you continue to do a great work, Jesus, around us. Dear God, help us have a burden like never before, Jesus. As we preach unto them, God, as we lift you, your name high to them, Jesus. Dear God, we ask that you would touch them, God, and create a hunger like never before, God. Dear God, give us a boldness to stand in public and preach your truth, Jesus. Give us a boldness to stand on the rooftops and magnify your name higher than every other name, Jesus. Give us a boldness to stand by the truth. And dear God, give us a faithfulness to stay in your word. Give us a faithfulness to stand by the only truth, Jesus. There is one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. And dear God, give us a faithfulness to stand by it. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. We have no announcements besides Merry Christmas tomorrow. Well, Friday. <laughs> I'm too excited. I'm, I'm ready for Christmas. I don't know about you. And also, Brother Alexander or Pastor will contact you and let you know about Sunday morning service, whether we will be having Sunday school or whether we will be here for worship at 1045. If you could show up early for prayer, that would be grateful. But once again, they will let you know whether we will be having Sunday school or not. As we have a guest, well, not a guest speaker. We speak frequently in front of the church, and we every time we get behind the pulpit, we constantly say how honored it is. Um, I bring Brother Stephen Fox to you right now. Well, praise the Lord, church. It's good to be with you at our midweek here. Now, it's been a couple weeks since I've done this, but... Um, I believe God has prepared a word for our church, and uh, I want to thank everybody who took the time to pray for me while I was sick. I know I was sick for a couple weeks, and um, those were a difficult few weeks, but I know that I had a church behind me that was praying for me and interceding on my behalf, and I know my family is doing much better now, so I would just like to thank everybody for that. Like Tyler was saying, we're, I don't really plan on being too long tonight. I know this is a midweek service, and I know it's the 23rd, so that means that Christmas is in two days, and I know that most of you are with your families, so we don't want to take away from that too much, but we do want God's will to be done, 
and however long that he intends for this to be, I pray that his will would be done in our service this evening. Um, but I want to get right into the word tonight. I, like I said, I do believe that this is a word that God has prepared for us directly in this moment, in this season. And um, I just want God's will to be done tonight. So if you all would just would just pray with me right where you're at right now, that God's will would be done. In Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you for bringing us here, God. We pray that you would speak your word, God. I pray that you would open a spiritual connection between the heaven and each house of the people that are listening to this tonight, God. Lord, I pray that your word would fall on good ground and good soil. In Jesus' name, let your will be done, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord, you are good, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. I want to take us to a verse in this to a verse in the scripture that is a lot of times known as a Christmas passage, and most of you will probably know this verse. But I want to go to the book of Matthew, um, chapter one, starting in verse eighteen, and we're just going to finish out all of chapter one. But starting with verse eighteen. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and willing, or not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord, or spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from his sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. I want to preach to you tonight, if you need a title, on this subject, on the other side of a dream. So here in the book of Matthew, it's pretty obvious that this is where the angel of the Lord, whose name is Gabriel, we find that out in the book of Luke, is speaking to Joseph. And he had already spoken to Mary prior to this, but this is the time and place where Gabriel comes to Joseph while he is asleep. Now prior to this, it was pretty obvious that there was a prophecy that went forth that a virgin would conceive and bear a child. We know in the book of Isaiah, starting in chapter 7 and verse 14, it says, There Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. And then two chapters later in Isaiah, verse, or Isaiah chapter 9, it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. But from the very beginning of time, we actually find where Jesus, or where God had spoken of this prophecy, all the way back in the book of Genesis, in chapter 3 and verse 15, it says, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. And what this is referring to is in the garden when God was speaking to the serpent. And so what this is saying is long before Jesus was ever born, and long before Isaiah had ever prophesied of the coming Messiah, Jesus had already known that a virgin would conceive and bear a child. And so finally, after thousands of years, in between the very creation of earth, and between Jesus' birth, we see this prophecy and the spoken word of God coming to pass. But before the angel Gabriel had ever met with Joseph, there was an encounter between Gabriel and Mary. In the book of Luke, chapter 1 and verse 26, if you could put that up there for me, it says, and in the sixth, that is not that, there we go, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto the city of Galilee, unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Verse 27 says, to a virgin espoused to a man. And so that 
word espouse there, I just want to clear this up, that does not mean they were married. They were engaged to be married at this point when Gabriel came to Mary. It says, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. Verse 28 says, and the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And verse 29 says, And when she saw him, she was troubled at his sin, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And verse 30 says, And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. And after this, Mary goes on and she's talking to Gabriel and she says, well, how is this possible? I haven't even known a man. I'm not even married. How is this possible? And Gabriel just explains, well, that that you're going to conceive is of the Holy Ghost. And so after that, Mary goes and she meets with Elizabeth, who has also just been informed that she's going to bear a son and his name is going to be John. The word of God says that John is going to prepare the way. And we know John the Baptist was the one that went through the forest telling of the coming Messiah. But here we have Mary who was in this encounter with Gabriel and Gabriel appears in her and says you are going to conceive of the Holy Ghost and Mary ends the conversation with as you have said it let it be done in my life and so she goes with Elizabeth she goes with Elizabeth and they're, they're just kind of having this party right Elizabeth is now pregnant and Elizabeth was barren prior to this and now Mary, who hadn't even known a man, and both of them are pregnant, and so they're rejoicing. I believe it's verse, I believe it's verse 46. Tyler, I don't know if you can put that up for me. It's Luke 1 and verse 46. I, I just want to point this out for a moment because this is cool. I was reading this on the way here. Yeah, I got it. So this is when Mary went and she met with Elizabeth. And Mary said, my soul doth magnify the Lord. This was after Gabriel had went and met with Mary. And she was rejoicing at the fact that she was going to conceive a child of the Holy Ghost, and this had been prophesied of. And so she goes to Mary, or she goes to Elizabeth, and these two are just kind of having a time. They're praising God. They're saying, look, you were barren, and I hadn't even known a man yet. But here we are rejoicing because we're both pregnant, and we are highly favored among women. But obviously, after some time, and after Mary being pregnant, Joseph was going to have to find out that Mary was pregnant. There, there had to come a time where she had to have this conversation, and the Bible isn't very clear on that. Some Bible scholars believe it was about three months after Mary started showing that she was you know, showing signs that she was pregnant. But I just simply believe that there was a conversation that had to happen there, where Mary is explaining to Joseph that she's pregnant, and she's explaining to her fiance at this time they're not even married that she is pregnant who has never known Mary has never known Joseph and Joseph has never known her Mary's never even known a man she is a virgin but she's pregnant and so Joseph probably gets in his mind and says well how am I supposed to believe that you being a virgin are supposed to conceive a child and it was obvious here that whether or not Joseph was thinking mad thoughts or whether or not he was just just trying to be a just man and put Mary away. It was obvious that even if Mary explained to him that, that she was going to conceive of the Holy Ghost, it's obvious that Joseph did not quite believe that. But we know this is why in verse 19 of Matthew 1, it says, Then Joseph, her husband, just, a just man and not willing to make her a public example, minded to put her away privily. And this is where Gabriel meets Joseph. The Bible says in verse 20, But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord came unto him. Came unto him in a dream. It appeared unto him. And said, Joseph, fear not to take Mary as thy wife. So Joseph, who was just having these thoughts, and maybe he was just afraid, and that's why Gabriel says these words, fear not. But Joseph is obviously thinking in his mind, he's not about to go through what God has positioned him to go through because he doesn't even believe it's from God originally. He's, he's made up in his mind and his 
thoughts before he, before he falls asleep and has this dream that, that he's just going to put her away. And I was reading and I was kind of doing some studying and, and, and one translation says that Joseph was just going to go to Mary's parents and say, I don't want to marry your daughter anymore. And another was just saying that he was just going to put her away and not, you know, make her a public example. He wasn't going to tell everyone about it. He was just going to put her away. But the angel comes into Joseph here and says, fear not to take Mary as thy wife, to, to be thy wife. And so the point of this and, and why this is relevant to us is because I believe that a lot of us are in that position where we are uh, about to go to sleep, but we're still thinking on these things. We're still thinking about the things that, that God is about to put us through, and we don't even really know if it's from God, but we're just trying to figure that part out. And, we're, and while we're thinking on these things, God has already prepared the way for an angel to come and say, fear not. And so why this is relevant, like I said, is because I feel like a lot of us are going through these things. But there's an angel at your door that's going to show up and say, brother, fear not. Or sister, fear not. Because what I have for you and what I have done is of the Holy Ghost. So do not be afraid of what I'm calling you to do. I know it may not seem normal. I know it, be, it may be out of the ordinary. It may hurt right now in this season. There may be something that you're afraid of. But you have got to fear not because what I am doing is of the Holy Ghost. And so Joseph here in this situation, who is about to become the earthly father to the everlasting father, who is about to be the dad of this coming Messiah that they have prophesied about for years that, that, that he didn't even really believe at first was a reality. But then Joseph is, a, Gabriel appears to Joseph in this dream. And verse 22 says, now when this was done, now this was done that it might be fulfilled. That it might be fulfilled. Gabriel comes to Joseph and says, She's pregnant, right? Your fiancé, your virgin fiancé is pregnant so that a prophecy in Isaiah might be fulfilled, so that a word of God that was spoken thousands of years ago might be fulfilled. And because the woman that you are engaged to is highly favored, church, because you are highly favored, God has selected you individually to go through what you're about to go through so that God's word might be fulfilled. And this is why Gabriel appears to Joseph and says, fear not, because God's known about this for a long time. God's known that he was going, or that a virgin was going to conceive, and that God had planned this from the very beginning when he said that the seed of a woman is going to dance upon the, the seed of the serpent. And so this was something that God had in preparation for a long time. Which leads me to believe Church, that God knew you would end up where you're at right now. Because if God had known that a virgin was going to conceive, then God knew that you were going to end up where you're at. And God knew that you were going to be in this situation. And God knew you were going to face something in 2020. And God knew something bigger was coming in 2021. But he knew it so that it might be fulfilled. And what he's doing through you is so that his word might be fulfilled. That's what he says in verse 22. Behold, a virgin shall be with child. This was the prophecy. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel, which was the prophecy in Isaiah. So thousands of years ago, before an angel ever appeared to Mary and Joseph, there was the prophecy that went forth. And this thing was done. A virgin is going to conceive so that the word of God might be fulfilled. But Jeremiah 29, 11 says, and this is the verse that I really want us to focus on for just a moment. In the New Living Translation, it says, for I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. So as I knew that you were going to face this, as I knew you were going to go through something, I knew you were going to go through it. I knew you were going to face this. I knew there was going to be things in your path that you don't understand or that you're afraid of. I knew they were coming, but they are thoughts of peace. They are not thoughts of evil, for God knows the plans. God knows how difficult this time is. 
But he also knows the plans he has for you. So what you got to do in your situation is just say, okay, devil, you can have me where I'm at. I might be losing family members. I might not have security. I might be afraid. But the position that I'm in is where God has me. And God knows the plans he has for me. So that's fine, devil. You can have this moment. I can be afraid right now. But God knows where I'm at. God knows where I'm at. In Jesus' name, this is all so that his word and that his prophecy might be fulfilled. And so what I want to focus on here, just for a moment, I don't want to be too long here, but, but before this, he's thinking on these thoughts, and he's thinking in his situation. But on the other side of the dream, Joseph arises, and he takes Mary as his wife. So I'm going to read this one more time. Joseph, while he was in his thoughts, while he was thinking about this, Gabriel appears unto him and says, Fear not to take Mary as your wife, because this is what we prophesied about. This is what was going to happen. We've known about this for a long time. And then verse 24 says, Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and called his name Jesus. And in this moment, Joseph arose from his sleep. He arose and was faced with the decision. He could still have put away Mary. He still could have made up in his mind, well, people are going to think I'm crazy if I take on someone who's a virgin and she's about to conceive and people aren't going to believe me. People, that's going to be humiliating in the long run. Joseph could have done that. But what he does is decide to raise up from his sleep and do as the angel of the Lord had told him to do. And because of this, the prophecy was able to be fulfilled. So what am I saying, church? Why is this relevant to us? Well, what I'm saying is, obviously right now, some of us are on the other side of the dream, and we're about to lay down our heads, and we're still thinking the thoughts of, I don't really know how this is going to work out. But on the other side of the dream, you're going to be faced with the decision to obviously to either press forward or to walk away. And in the beginning, Joseph was going to walk away. He was going to put away Mary privily. But what he made up in his mind after the Lord had dealt with him to do was, no, I'm going to walk through this. Obviously, God is telling me to walk through it. I may not know what it looks like. I may be afraid of going, but God is saying do it. So I don't really have another. I'm just going to go. And I don't know what it looks like. I may be humiliated in the end. I may have to walk through some things that are frightening to me. But God is on my side. So that is the way I'm going to walk. And that is what Joseph decides here to do. So here we are at the end of 2020. We've faced things as a church. We've had an outbreak in our church. We've lost people to that. We've really struggled with some things. But the angel of the Lord is appearing to us right now at the end of this and saying, fear not. What we are doing is fulfilling the word of God. What we are doing is getting you to the other side. Because on the other side of this is the promise. On the other side of this is salvation. What is on the other side of this dream is going to save you. But it is your decision to make up your mind to fear not as Joseph here could have been afraid when the angel came to him and he said fear not I'm sure Joseph was not in a good position the woman that he loves the woman he was engaged to the person that he was already planning on spending the rest of his life with has put him in this predicament that he feels like is not from God and is just because she was unfaithful But the angel comes to him and says, fear not, because I know the plans I have for you. I know what we're doing, Joseph. If you would just, if you would just bear with us for a little bit, we're going to get you through this. Or there's something coming in Bethlehem. There's a star that's going to shine in the sky. There's a savior that's going to come. The prophecy is going to be fulfilled, Joseph, but you just got to keep pressing. You just got to keep going. There's something on the other side of this, but you got to fear not in this situation. You got to fear not in this situation. The situation may be scary. The situation may be uncertain. You may not really know how this is going to work out, but you got to fear not. And here's why, Joseph, on the other side of this, if you would just get a hold of this now, if you would not let this take you away, I know it doesn't make sense, Joseph, but if you would just get through this, I'm going to pull you to the other side. I'm going to make the prophecy fulfilled. I'm going to bring salvation. 
And what Joseph was appointed to go through was the very thing that would bring him salvation. Long before, ever, long before Jesus, long before Gabriel had ever shown up at Joseph's door, and long before Gabriel had ever showed up to Mary to say they were going to conceive, God had the plan. God had the prophecy. Isaiah prophesied this about 2,000 or 1,000 or so years ago prior to this. So God had known what they were going to go through. And God had known who he was going to use for what. And God had known who he was going to put in that situation. And God knew it was going to be Mary and Joseph, two people who it wouldn't make sense. It doesn't make sense for a virgin to conceive. It doesn't make sense for a carpenter to bear the, the everlasting father. It doesn't make sense for those two to be the father. But God knew long before he had, long before they had ever knew that they were the favored ones who he was going to use. And what I'm saying here is that God knew you were going to be in this situation long before you found yourself in it. At the day you were born, God knew you would sit here and watch this service tonight. At the day you were conceived, God knew you were going to face what you're facing right now. So what I'm saying is what you're going through is so his word would be fulfilled. But you got to let him fulfill it. You got to fear not in this season because what he is doing is spoken a long time ago. God knew from the very beginning what he was going to do. And so in this season, church, I charge you to fear not. In this situation, I charge you to fear not. As Joseph feared not, as Mary feared not, as they went through it, and they brought salvation to the world, I would charge you to get through this with everything that you have. You may not have much left in the tank. You may be running on empty. But I charge you to get through this because what is coming on the other side has been prophesied for a long time before you had made it here. Same church, I don't want to be too much longer. I, I know that we're about to have Christmas here, and this is the best time of the year by far. We're going to celebrate the birth of Jesus, and, and that is great and everything. And I, and I, and I, love, I, love, I love this time of year. I, I really do. But church, this, this year is not like other years. There, we are definitely facing things that we have not faced before. We are going to face things in the future. 2021, we have no idea what that is going to bring. We have no idea what is going to be inflicted on us. We have no idea what persecution we're going to face. We have no idea what is on the other side of this. But this was prophesied in the word of God. This was spoken by the word of God. God knew we would find ourselves here. And so what I would say to you tonight, church, as I get ready to close this up, just fear not. Fear not, for the angel of the Lord is appearing unto you and saying what we are doing has been prophesied. What we are doing is the spoken word of God. You just got to keep pressing. You just got to keep moving because through this, we are going to bring you to where you were supposed to be all along. Through, through this, we are going to bring you to salvation. Through you, we are going to bring, through this, we are going to bring you in places that you did not think you were ever going to be able to get to. So I want to pray for our church. I, I, I know that these last few months have been all over the place. We've faced intimidation. We've faced brokenness. We've faced loss. We live in a city that is ruled by brokenness and, and addiction. And we, we just, we're living in uncertain times. But times were uncertain before with Mary and Joseph. I didn't quite understand how it was going to come together, but it came together in a way that has brought you salvation today. So I want to pray for our church. I just, I want us to go into this next year fearing not. On the other side of this dream is where God has us. And so the angel of the Lord is getting ready to deal with you, and they're going to say, this is done. So that the word of God that was already spoken a long time ago might come to pass. And when the angel of the Lord appears to you, I charge you, church, fear not. In Jesus' name, Lord, you are so good, God. And we thank you, Lord, for your word. I pray that this would fall on ready ground, God. I pray that this would fall on ready soil, God. Lord, you know us. We are going through things, God. As if we are being placed in these, in these times, God, of uncertainty, Lord, as the world is seemingly crumbling around us, God. Lord, you are just 
telling us to fear not. You were telling us to persevere, God. You were telling us to press forward, God, in spite of the uncertain times, Lord. So I pray right now in the name of Jesus, you would be with us, God. You would teach us to fear not, God. You would teach us to press forward, Lord. You would preach, uh, you, would, you would just teach us how we are supposed to get through this, God. It may be uncertain, Lord. We may not know what we are going to go through, God, but Lord, you know it, Lord. Your word has spoken it, God. And we believe, Lord, that your word is going to be fulfilled if we would just fear not. If we would just allow you to do what you desire to do. If your word would come to pass, Lord, we'll be willing, God. Lord, you, we are standing be- you are standing before a group of willing vessels, God. And we are willing to do what you are calling us to do in this season, Lord. But I pray for a boldness in our church, God, that we would fear not what we are facing, Lord that you would be with us, God, and we would know. In the name of Jesus, we pray. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, church, thank you all so much for joining us this evening. I pray that you have a great Christmas. I pray that you get to see your family, and, and we love you very much. Like Pastor or like Tyler said, we will let you know if there is going to be service on Sunday. But in Jesus' name, I pray that he would be with you, and, and Lord bless you all. Amen.